Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, convert object to a JSON string. This problem is actually slightly easier than yesterday's problem, but it's definitely a very practical one. Now, in reality, you probably won't ever have to implement something exactly like this because there literally is a built-in method to do exactly what we're gonna do today, but you will probably have to parse some highly nested JSON in your life. And this problem will teach you some of the nuance on how to do that. Basically in JavaScript objects kind of look like this where we have key value pairs and they can actually be nested. We'll take a look at that in the second example, but basically given an object, we want to convert it to pretty much exactly how it's given, at least in this problem, where every key value of the object is going to be a string with a double quotes around it. Every key value pair is going to be separated by a comma. The object itself is going to have some curly braces around it. You can see there's no white space because that would just be unnecessary. It doesn't really add value unless the white space is part of a string. Numbers don't have quotation. And taking a look at the second example, it's pretty similar to the first one. We just have a few more types, negative 12, true, null. And the third example is a bit more interesting because this object actually is nested. You can see one key has, well, let me actually copy and paste it over here. You can see that this key actually has multiple or rather a single object as the value in that object, of course, has some attributes as well, where A maps to one, B maps to an array in this case. And array values are also going to be separated by commas and arrays are going to be wrapped with these braces. So before I start solving this problem, you want to really understand how we convert objects to strings in JavaScript, or else you're really not going to have a good time. So let's just start by logging some primitive types and we get pretty much what we would expect. But here's where things are going to get a bit more interesting. Let's say we console.log a string that's four. And this time we just put single quotations around it. What are we going to get in the output? We're going to get four again. Let's do the exact same thing with double quotes and we do get four. So that just tells us there's no difference between single quotes and double quotes in JavaScript, but we're going to need a way to distinguish between strings and numbers. Thankfully, we do have the type of, so when we take the type of four and the type of this string four, we do get number and string. So that's how we can distinguish between these. Let's clean this up now. And let's say over here, instead of logging this, I log this as an array. It just has a single value right now. What do we expect? Well, this is what we get, but this is not what we want. Like we want this to render as exactly how it's displayed. Even if it had single quotes, we would want it to actually render as this with double quotes and the four and the brackets and no white space. So we can't just you know call this and then get the output of that. And we can't even convert this to a string. If I convert this to a string, we're gonna get this in the output, just four. If I add a few more to this, let's say I add a three and I log it, we get the values, but they're separated by a comma. We are gonna have to add those brackets brackets ourselves. And we're actually going to add the commas ourselves because for all we know, these might not be primitives. They might be objects. So let's say we had an object that looks like this, A. And then I put A as the first value in this array. And then we convert that to a string and then try to log it. You're going to see we get object object because that's how objects render when you convert them to a string. That's why there is a built-in method called json.stringify. And you call that on the object A and then you actually get it part parsed out with exactly what we want. This is how we want this object to actually render. This is the method that we're pretty much trying to implement today. The only thing I didn't mention were Boolean. So let me just log one over here, but it's pretty much what you would expect. Convert that to a string and you get that. So that is good information to know. Now let's get into the problem. So since we know we could be dealing with objects, primitives, arrays, the first thing I like to check for is kind of the base case where we have object and it's either equal to null or it's equal to undefined. And when we have that, we can literally just convert the object to a string and return it. Because as we saw, when you convert null to a string, we get null. When you convert undefined to a string, we get undefined. So it works in both cases. And the other thing you might want to check another base case is what if the type of this is a number or the type of this is a Boolean? Because those kind of also would fall into this case. And yeah, that's possible. You can do that if you'd like but we can actually put that all the way at the end after we try every other possibility. Up here, we're going to try objects, 
we're going to try arrays, and we're going to try strings. And the reason we're going to try all of these separately is because we know objects are going to take curly brackets around them, arrays are going to need regular brackets, and strings are going to need double quotes around them. Booleans and numbers do not need that, so we can literally just convert them to strings. And we know if none of these three execute, we probably just have a primitive like that. So now let's get into these cases. The first one you might be tempted to try is just say type of object is equal to object. And we do need the string here because that's what type of does return. But we actually learned in the last problem that the type of an array also ends up being an object. So maybe inside here, we could check if it's an array or like a regular object. But an easier way to do that would actually be just to check if it's an array first. So up here, let's check if it's an array. And we can do that with array dot is array. The array class will tell us if this is an actual array. And if it is, then in here, we're going to add the those brackets and like a stringify it, of course, and then return somewhere in here. So if this one doesn't execute, then we know this one is going to execute. And the third one is if it's neither an object or an array, it might be a string and we can check that with type of. So if type of this is equal to string, then it's pretty easy. We do just have to convert the object to a string, but we then have to add the double quotation marks around it. So you can do that like this, but you can see we're kind of getting an error here. And if you want to do that, you have to escape it with like the slash sign because since we're wrapping this with double quotes, we can't use double quotes quotes normally inside of the string, or you could add single quotes around it, and then you wouldn't need the escape character. And we're going to need to do this not only at the end, but also at the beginning. So this is one valid way to do this, but actually JavaScript has the backtick character, which is pretty powerful. So if you wrap this variable in backticks, this will render as like a normal string. This will render as this string. But if you add the dollar sign and then curly braces at the beginning and end of it, JavaScript will know that this is actually a variable and it will use the value of that variable in the string. But so far, this is just literally the string representation of that. We still do need to add the double quotes around it. And we can do that like this, just putting the double quote character at the beginning and at the end. Since these double quotes are outside of the curly braces and dollar sign, that means these will actually render the character itself. So that's what we're going to be using in the above two cases as well to add the curly braces and brackets. Now let's start with the array case. What we kind of want to do is just iterate through every value in the array. Maybe we could use a pointer i and keep going until we reach the length of this object and increment i on each iteration. And then you might be tempted to just convert object at index i to a string and then maybe add that to some output result string that we're trying to build here and then trying to uh, return that string. First bug with this though is that a value inside of an array could be an object itself. So probably we need to use recursion in this case. If it does end up being a primitive, we know our recursive call will handle that. It could be null or undefined, or it just might not execute any of these three and might be a Boolean or number. Maybe it's a string, or maybe we are gonna keep going recursive. That's for the recursive function to decide. So we're not gonna convert this object to a string. We're gonna call the more powerful function json stringify which we are defining right now and yeah we could take this and add it to the result and also we'd have to remember to add a comma after every single iteration and then at the end remove that comma this is the natural imperative way to do it but javascript is pretty powerful we can do this declaratively by just taking every value in the object and mapping it to a new value so we're going to say object dot map each object object to the string representation recursively. So stringify this object. And this will give us a new array of the values now that they've been converted to strings. So how does this make it any easier for us? Well, we can join an array of strings with the join method. So we can say values.join and delimit all of these strings with the comma. So this won't add the comma at the beginning or the end. It'll only add it in between strings 
in values. And ultimately, that's what we're going to try to return here, not any other variable. But there's also a problem here. We forgot to add the bracket characters at the beginning and end. You could do it this way, but again, we're going to use the back ticks because they're pretty easy and also make things pretty readable for us. So adding back ticks around this, we want this to be a variable. So we add the dollar sign curly brace. And then outside of those, we're going to add the open bracket and the close bracket. So now it's in the proper format that we want. And lastly, we have objects. As you can imagine, we're going to want to do something similar here because every key value pair in an object also needs to be separated by a comma only in between them. But first, to actually iterate through all the keys of an object, we have to say object.keys getting all of those in the form of an array. So this is going to be an array of all of the keys. You might say, why didn't we just take the values like in the array case? Well, because in objects, we need both the key and value pair. And we can always take the key and get the value. So I'm going to say keys map these taking every key. We don't just want to get the object using this key. We want to pass that object in to JSON stringify because we might want to parse that as well. It might be a primitive or it might be an object. But when you convert an object to a string, you don't only want the values. Remember, you also want the key and you want the key to be separated by a colon in between like this. And while this is perfectly fine, you can also write it with the back ticks, which is what I'm going to do right now real quick, adding the dollar sign and curly braces around this variable here. Same thing over here. And we're going to keep the colon in between them. And then we're going to wrap this with back ticks. So now this looks pretty complicated, but it's mostly just formatting that's going on here. The main piece of code running is just converting the object into a string recursively. And we know when we call this, it doesn't actually update the array. It creates a new array of the key value pairs. And those are now going to be strings. And this array, of course, we know we want to join it with the delimiter, which is a comma. And we also want to wrap this thing in curly braces, just like this curly brace dollar sign com or open bracket sucks having to erase the second one every single time but curly brace and dollar sign and then another curly brace because that tells us that this is a variable so close that curly brace and a second curly brace and then the back tick remember the last curly brace and the first one are actually a part of the string the other ones just indicate that this is a variable and i think we're pretty much done but i noticed that for the key Every key has to be wrapped in double quotes because every key is always a string in JavaScript. Now that I've done that, I think I broke the leak code syntax highlighting, but I think that's pretty much the entire code. Now let's just run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.